name is Manoj Zuniga. And welcome to this edition of What TV, where we discuss and analyze current events. Today, our special guest is award-winning TV news anchor, Jackie Nespro. Thank you so much for having me, Juan and Manny. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm looking forward to this interview. Likewise. To begin, I want to ask you, when did you first know you wanted to become a television journalist? I think I must have been maybe 10 or 12 years old, and um, I was at the Calle Ocho Festival, which is a, going to happen this week as well here, and uh, Carnival Miami. And um, somebody came, was doing a survey, and asked me if I could interview anyone in the world, who would it be? And I thought long and hard about it, and as a young girl, I said Barbara Walters. And they asked me, why would you want to interview Barbara Walters? And I said, because she has interviewed all the people that I would like to interview, and she could give me perspective on all of those people. And um, I remember growing up watching Barbara Walters and, and really looking up to her and really thinking that maybe that's a person or a career that I would like to try. And later on in life, when I started working on the Today Show, I actually got to meet her. So it was a wonderful experience, almost like a full circle experience. Well, it's almost like a, like a movie type of thing. Yeah, almost like a movie type of thing. <laughs> and, you know, she, she was one of the first women to, to really uh, make it in this industry. And, and not only make it, but really uh, sustain that kind of, of uh, a job for so many years and at that level. And so she did so many different interviews. She did from celebrities to politicians to newsmakers. And, um, and she was able to always handle it with so much professionalism that she was someone that I really looked up to. You know, with that being said, you have years of experience out there. And what do you owe your longevity to? Wow, that's a really good question. Um, I think, first of all, I, I work in South Florida, and this is a market that I know very well, and that I love, and I cherish, and I really put my heart and soul into what I do every day, and I think people can really tell that, and I, I'm knowledgeable about this community, and, and what the people in this community, the makeup of the people in this community, and what they want. So I'm very involved in the editing process and the editorial process of, of my newscast, so we really pick and choose stories. That, that we think um, will appeal to the people of South Florida. And, you know, this is such a diverse community. Um, and you're talking about, you know, Hispanic, African American, Anglo, and, and the, Hispanic, the Hispanic population in South Florida is very different from any other population because you go to New York and most of the population in New York is Puerto Rican or Dominican. Most of the people in California, the Hispanic population is Mexican. But here you have from Central and South America and you have a really good mix. It's a true melting pot. So it's very different. And so Hispanics, you know, even though they may put us in one category because we speak Spanish, we're really not. And we come from different countries with, um, with different cultures and different experiences and different history. So it's an interesting dynamic in this community. And I think that um, because I'm able to represent it in a certain way, I think that has contributed to my longevity. Another part of it is I think that what you see is what, is what you get with me. And so not only am I a news journalist, but I am also a mother and a wife. And what you see is what you get. So when I'm on the news every night, um, I don't change my persona to become the news person. I'm the same person on and off. And I think that's important, that sense of being genuine, because some people come across as being disingenuous. So because people um, believe that I'm a genuine person, and I think that's, that has also contributed to my success in my longevity. And to bounce off, what do you consider is the most impressive news story you have had to report on? I think um, the Pope in Cuba, without a doubt. Um, being Cuban-American and always you know, hearing about my, my parents' country and my grandparents' country, so, and, never, and ha I've never been there. And being a Catholic, you know, having the Pope in Cuba. So the first visit, the first papal visit, which was a historic visit, first time a Pope had visited that country. Um, and I, that was my assignment to go and to cover it. So it was very exciting and so on so many levels. First of all, to step into this country, this communist country that I had heard so much about as a child growing up and that I felt so um, attached to and, um, and that I loved this country even though I had never been there. And then as a Catholic and being able to, to cover the papal visit um, was just unbelievable. And it, and it was one of my Emmys that I won. One of my, I think now, five Emmys. <laughs> but who's counting, right? <laughs> and just to be clear, you were born here, not in Cuba. Right. I was born here in Miami, Florida, Mercy Hospital. So I'm a true native Miamian. Mm -hmm. But 
I'm very proud of my roots. And my mother and my father are both, both Cuban. And I'm, I've always been very proud of where I come from. And I have used that not as a disadvantage, but as an advantage. Um, I remember being on the Today Show, and I was the first Hispanic to anchor a network newscast on the Today Show. And so when they hired me, I think they had this vision of what a Hispanic was, somebody that had a Hispanic last name, like a Fernandez or Hernandez or a Garcia. So th I think they wanted somebody like that with a Hispanic, but, but maybe not a true, true Hispanic American like yeah. I consider myself. So the fact that I'm truly bilingual and bicultural, and I wear that on my sleeve. So I would talk about on the Today Show, you know, oh, last night I had uh, pork and white rice and black beans and, and fried plantains, or I listened to Celia Cruz or to Gloria Stefan. So I really incorporated that into my job. And it was a little um, alarming at first, I think, to the viewers because, you know, they were so used to having a Northeastern accent, a Northeastern look to be part of network news. And here, this crazy person came from South Florida that was truly, in every sense of the word, you know, bilingual and bicultural. So um, I think I, I taught them a lesson as to, you know, what, you know, who we are, where we come from, and we don't fit into any mold being Hispanic Americans. So I'm very proud of that, of that work there. You know, in contrast, was there ever a story you refused to cover because you felt uncomfortable? I haven't, and um, I've, I've always covered stories that have been assigned to me, because there's always going to be difficult stories, you know, whether it's, you know, uh, somebody that has a, a sickness, a child, as a mother, that pains me. It's very, it's very difficult for me to cover those kinds of stories, or a political story. You know, I remember also um, interviewing an official in Cuba when I was there that was completely against my beliefs, but as a journalist, you have to be impartial, and you have to be objective. And so, um, you know, we can all have our feelings, you know, our political affiliations, our religious, you know, beliefs. Uh, but at the end of the day, if you're a journalist and if you're a true journalist, you can, you can cover any type of story and do it in a fair and balanced way. And I think that's very important as a journalist. You have to try to set your feelings aside and try to get to the bottom of, of any story being fair and impartial and balanced. All right, so we have talked about um, your life growing up here when you were 12. You wanted to be like Barbara. But what has been your career highlight in, in general? Boy, um, like I said, my, my favorite story was the, the papal visit in Cuba. My career highlight is probably, you know, my Emmys because, you know, that is the test of, of what you do every day on a daily ba basis. And, and by getting awarded an Emmy in the television industry, in the news industry, that's the highest honor. So, so in order to get multiple Emmys, every time I've won an Emmy, I feel very um, humbled and honored that um, my peers have voted me something that I have done and have awarded me with an Emmy. So to me, that's, that's a highlight, the, the Emmys that I have won and, and because of the stories. But I think, obviously, I mean, if I have to talk about my career and my career span, I think the highlight has been working on the Today Show uh, because the Today Show is, is, you know, such a historic part of our culture here in, in the, this country, the Today Show. And so the fact that I was able to work on something um, so big, um, which was that morning news program. And then again, being the first Hispanic to be part of a network news program, I think, um, I mean, for me, that has to be the highlight. And then finally, leaving that show and leaving it on a high note, because when we started the Weekend Today show, there wasn't a, um, a news show in the morning on Saturdays. There was, on, there was only cartoons. So we actually developed the show. We, we added another day to it, Saturday today and Sunday today. And really, at the beginning, it was very difficult to get viewership at that time because people weren't accustomed to waking up on a Saturday morning. There wasn't <laughs> CNN or Fox or any of these newscasts now that you can, you can turn to any, a number of channels on any given day, any given time, and get news. But back then, you're talking about you know 26 years ago, there wasn't that, or actually 21 years ago. There wasn't that. So there was really four networks, ABC, CBS, NBC, and Fox. So we were starting something new. We were really pioneering news on a Saturday morning. So by the time I left after three years on the Weekend Today Show, that was the number one show in the morning. So I left it on a high note. So that's a, an accomplishment that I'm very proud of as well. You know, in your career, what has been the greatest sacrifice you have made so far? I think, I think being a mom of four and being a full-time professional, a journalist, 
you know, I've had to make a lot of sacrifices be, because of that. I mean, I, I have made an effort to always put my family first. And when I was on the Today Show, I would travel back and forth on a weekly basis. Um, always, you know, being very focused and very clear as to what's important in life, and that's family. So I would travel back and forth. You know, the first year, my, my husband and my oldest daughter, they moved with me, and then they moved back, and I commuted back and forth. And now I commute back and forth two times a day to work and back from Broward to, to Miami in order to be with family. But there's always sacrifices. There's always, you know, certain events that the kids have done or weddings or whatever that I have missed because of my job. So that has always been very difficult. But I think that the other side of that is that I think I have set a really good example for especially for my girls, I have three girls and a boy, and that that it's okay that you can you can be a, a working successful individual, and you could also be a mother and a wife. And if you know how to manage it, and if you can focus and really prioritize, that you can make it you can make it work. But there have definitely been sacrifices. And Jackie, I was going to ask you how it felt being the first Hispanic female on a nationally broadcast. Actually, it's the first Hispanic period. So if you male, female, whatever, <laughs> the first Hispanic, no, no, that's good. But, but, but I think, I think it's, it's important to note as well because, you know, a lot of people, especially in my business when it started, it was really male-dominated. And so, so in those initial stages, and that's why Barbara was, it was so important for, for female journalists because she really was able to break the barriers. And so, but I think I also, to a certain extent, broke barriers as well as being the first Hispanic, male or female. So I wanted to ask you, uh, through this, do you have any message that you want to send to Latinos out there? Um, because as we all know, you're Hispanic, Hispanic American, and you succeeded. Is there any message you want to send out to Latinos that maybe y we can do it, that even though it might be harder, it is possible? I think, I think anything is possible. Um, and I think that to being proud of your roots is so important because it's, it's, it's something that, that it forms you, that makes you who you are and I think gives you a different perspective as well it, as to what you can bring to the table. Also, keeping your language is so important. I mean, I started in Spanish television on Univision, and really that prepped me for what I'm doing today. I was able to make the transition from Spanish television to English. So really, you know, having that second language is such a benefit, such a plus, and really st staying um, close to your roots and being proud of who you are and, and where you came from. You know, the Hispanics are the 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 biggest minority right now in this country they really need us and they need our perspective and it's important that that we keep that and that we're close to those roots and that if you believe in yourself and if you really want something you can achieve it it doesn't matter where you came from who you are or what you've done if, if you work hard and you believe in yourself and you're willing to make some sacrifices then you can achieve it and you can do it no matter where you came from that's true, that's true. I also wanted to ask you, what do you see as the role of TV journalists in covering such volatile story as it is happening currently in Venezuela and in the Ukraine? I think, I think that um, the, this, this job that I do now, which is being a journalist and journalism as a whole, has really changed so much throughout the years and has evolved. You know, remember when, when it first started, there was only one way to get your news and that was through television or through the newspaper. Right, started of course as a newspaper, and then you know all of a sudden the television medium started, and then you could you could get your news. And there was at the time there was only three networks: ABC, CBS, and NBC. Then Fox came into the picture. Now there's so many different avenues where you can get your news. You know the internet, which has been incredible and has changed, you know um, as us as a whole and how we get our news. And so um, so because of that, I think that we have had to evolve. And we have had to kind of like um, um, reimagine ourselves and recreate what this business is, and tell the news in a different way, and to make it to make it more appealing to the masses. Because right now it's just too easy to get on your phone, and and you have an app for the news and see what's the latest in the news. But but and that's what has evolved and that's what has changed. But the core of what we do has not, and that is to cover the news and that is to get the truth and get to the bottom of a story. And if you go to Venezuela and you cover what is going on there and you see the protests and you see, you know, and, and to get, to, get the, to the bottom of the story and to talk to people and just get down and dirty with the people and see what's going on. It's difficult 
and some people have lost their lives covering stories like that. But um, and 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 really being true, and getting the truth out. And so I think that's important, whether it's in the Ukraine or it's Venezuela or whatever uh, story you're covering. You have to go in with an open mind, no matter how you feel about it, to get to the bottom of the story and to get to the and to get the truth out and let people know what is happening where you're covering it, whether it's Venezuela or the Ukraine or whatever it is that you're covering. Get the truth out. Let the truth be known to the people. And that's the best way to help any kind of situation when you know the truth. You worked in Miami for the past 21 years or so. In your eyes, how has it changed for the better or for the worse? You know, obviously, there's going to be some negative impacts to how much Miami has changed and how much it's grown. Obviously, traffic is one of them. You know? Unfortunately. Crime, you know, and any of those things that come with a big city like Miami. But the other side of that is the diversity of it. It's such a wonderful place to grow up and to really be part of, of, of what the real world is. Um, I don't think we're sheltered here at all. We have it, we have everything that we could ever want at our disposal. That's good and that's bad. If you make the right choi choices, it could be very good. If you make the wrong choices, it could be very bad. But the fact of the matter is that you can meet on any given day someone from any country speaking another language of any race and I, I think we live in a, in, a, in, in a place where we're very open to other cultures and, um, and I think it's a wonderful thing because you learn about life and you learn about people when you grow up in a diverse place like this is. So it has grown leaps and bounds and, um, and with, with growth comes some negative things but also but the, the positives outweigh the negative so much that it's great to live in a place like this and culturally too I mean now when you have you know the Perez Center and you have the Adrian R Center and in terms of culture and the arts it's really another place completely and so um, I think it, I think it's wonderful and if and if you could take advantage of everything that Miami has to offer then you are a blessed person and to switch topics a little bit now with so much social media out there for example Facebook Twitter how do you see this impacting the broadcasting industry in the near future? Oh, it's already impacting us. I mean, you know, I thought that Twitter and Facebook was really for the young, the young people like you guys. You know, that that's how you're communicating and that's how you're getting your information for the most part. But now, as as a journalist, you know, it's it's very it's been very hard for me. I remember when my bosses came to me and they said, "You're going to have to start using social media. This is a perfect way for for uh, for you to bring viewers into into the newscast." And um, I was reluctant at first. It was very difficult for me. And I felt initially, in the initial stages when I started, to me it was like exercise. I know it's something I have to do, but I don't want to do it. So uh, that's how I felt about it. But now I understand and appreciate the significance and the importance of social media. And so, you know, you're getting information so quickly. I think it's the quickest form of information. So th what, what, what social media can't do for the most part is really interpret the news. And that's our job. You know, we get a news nugget, something that's happening, and then we can analyze it, we can interpret it, and we can interview, and we, and we can do the full story of that news nugget. But in terms of how fast you can get it, social media is where it's at. And it's changed our industry, too, because, you know, we have to. We have to look at social media, and we have people now that that's what they do. They're constantly looking to see what is going on in the world, because that's the quickest way to get the news. Last but not least, how does it feel to be a Belen mom? <laughs> <laughs> that is a great story. That's a great question because I have never been more proud of, of a school and of what my son has been able to accomplish here. I think it, it brings very well-rounded boys and it makes them into men and it makes them more importantly into gentlemen. And I think that, you know, when you have religion and when you have, um, you know, culture and when you have education, and when, you, and when you have what this school teaches you, which are the basic values of a human being and how a man should act, and not only in school, but after school for so many years to come, I think I'm so proud that my son um, has, is a Belen student and that he's going to graduate from Belen. I'm very proud of that fact, and I'm very proud of what Belen has been able to accomplish you know, in this country, in Miami. I mean, the graduates of Belen go to the top universities and they become the movers and shakers, not only of South Florida, but across the country and the world. So that's something to be said, what they've been able to accomplish in such a short amount of time, because it, it is a fairly new school in, in Miami. So, um, and it's a well-rounded school. 
And so, and I think that for Belen, it's just as important the education that you're getting them from the religious background that you're getting, the cultural background that you're getting. And so all of that makes you guys such well-rounded boys and individuals and really prepares you for the world that's ahead of you. So I am so proud to be a Belen mom. That's one of my proudest achievements. Well, Jackie, this is it for this edition of What's AT. Thank you very much for being with us. Juan and Manny, that was a great interview. Thank you and good luck to you.